after a delay of a, I don't know, a week and a half, something like that, I'm back on the car. I've picked up a nice, well it's not new, but a uh, second hand door, but it has a perfect, perfectly crisp low edge to it. There's literally no rust in that section, which is great. There's a bit here where that flange is blown, but that's not a big problem. But the bits that usually go all the way along there is fine. So, uh, I'm going to carry on with my preparations for the sill, knowing that if I need to, I can bolt that on, gap it nicely to the door frame and the remainder of the front wing and that rear near side door. And then I've got a nice straight edge to measure up to when I'm adjusting my sill before I actually weld it on. So I'm going to get the tools out and go and uh, continue preparing that inner sill ready for the outer one. It's an absolute scorcher of a day. So I'm out here. Um, I'm going to finish off welding the bits I couldn't get to before, close that section off and repair a bit in there. Then I can get ready for cutting the front of the sill off and getting that wing off. But jiffy later, we've just continued that seam along. Now I'm going to go and get a piece to cut out and put in here and then I can close off that box section um, now that I'm happy there's no rust in there. Put a bit in there. Um, if you've been following the videos ages ago, I repaired the floor in here but I never actually plug welded it back to the inner sill so I'm going to get under there now. I've already drilled the plug holes on the flange on the floor on the other side it's just a case of clamping it up and then getting under there with the MIG welder and welding it back onto here. Just put another bit in back there and uh, I put a couple of heavy tacks in at the front there you can see where the paint's burnt through so I'm quite happy that all of that's stiff enough now to um, chop the remainder of that front wing off and unpick that front section of the sill. So there's our first look with the front section of the sill chopped off. So that's where the sill would have come up to just in the process of getting rid of the old flanges. Uh, then I can rebuild the bottom of the inner wing and then drill out all of this, put a new set on. Continuing the uh, removal of the old seal, I've drilled out all the plug welds, same as I did with the B pillar, and then popped that seam apart. Uh, I'm going to run along here with the grinder and then go inside the car and then drill out the other plug welds. This flange, <coughs> I'm just going to cut off here because I'll be able to lay a nice seam of weld between here and the top of the sill when I put the new sill in. The only reason I'm going to the trouble of making this look nice is because when the doors open you'll see that area. So if I'd snotted it on with a big bead of weld it would just look completely well horrible. So doing it nicely here then where you won't see it I'll just make sure it's nice and strong. Remember that in a wing that I chopped a bit out from there to go in the front. <clears throat> well, I'm going to chop this section out to replace what should be in there. Right, so that's chopped out. That's going to go on something like that. Uh, now I'm wondering what sort of paint I should put on this before I get it on there. Uh, options are just etch or zinc primer or that red uh, lead type paint. I've decided to go with the Bonda rust prim primer, it stops rusting fast drying. Internet and comments on YouTube and retro rides suggest that that stuff's really good. It's also a lot cheaper than the Joe Tun 87 I've been using. I think it's less uh, like fussy about what surfaces you put it on but even so I've degreased that because uh, it came with all of the original sort of delivery wax 
then I'm gonna rough it up a bit with some sandpaper but the plan is cover all of that with uh, the rust primer tonight and the back side of that and then tomorrow I can sand off where I need to to back to metal and then weld that on give it another coat of paint and while that's going off I can prep the sill for going on and there we have it one inner sill exposed rust treated prepped um, tomorrow hopefully I can go about putting the new sill on <clears throat> There's something, I know I've said it before, but you know, just so therapeutic about painting something all the same colour, just makes it look so much more finished. Uh, while I'm out and thinking about it, that's my new bonnet. No, it's not the right colour blue, but what it is, is original and basically rust free. So that's good. And it basically, uh, that came free with that silver car. So it's a series two bonnet so it'll go on this one it doesn't suit the silver car anyway it's the next day all of the paint has gone off nice and hard done the back side of my inner sill no sorry not inner sill uh, inner arch thing so that's gonna go in here but what i'll need to do is pre-drill some plug weld holes for that seam there and also it needs to pick up on that flange there so I'll need to offer this up mark out and then drill a plug weld hole here and then that can go on and then I can um, paint the outer face of this drill my new sill for the plug weld holes onto that flange and the whole flange along the bottom and because I have a habit of snapping drill bits I went and bought some more this morning I usually buy them off eBay because it's cheaper but I had to go to the DIY store and buy them so that's about five quid's worth of drill bits so I'm going to try my best not to uh, snap those here's my panel drilled for the plug welds um, on the car where I'm going to know that I'm going to put a seam in I've just taken the top of the like red primer off and I'm going to shoot a bit of zinc weld primer on it just to protect it got that clamped in I'm just going to go around with this scribe now and clean out any holes like that so that I get a nice good plug weld so I'll do that all along the bottom that one up here and then I'll put the sanding disc through that again just to make sure I've got good metal there right I was trying to show some welding going on there but I'm having problems with my camera uh, it doesn't seem to like it so anyway what I've done is plug welded those in some worked better than others then I've just seamed along the top and up into the sill. I blew a big hole there, so I've filled that in. So I'll have to grind all that back now. And then um, I can get ready with my uh, paint and then put the sill on. That's all cleaned up now. I'm not gonna put the paint on that just yet because I've got a lot of prep to do on that inner sill, oh, sorry, on the inside of the new sill. Uh, so I'm gonna go and get that, drill all the plug weld holes. Then um, sand back any bits where the where it's distorted from the drilling, and then offer it up to the car. And um, only at that point will I then, once I'm happy with the fit, take it off again. Well, as I lie here, you can kind of see what's going on. I'm just trying to wedge that up and in there to get some idea of how easy this this is going to be to get in. At the moment it's being a bit of a bitch because I need to hold all of these seams open while I slot this thing through and I really need uh, to be pushing up from underneath with a screwdriver or something just to lift that flange up and then I can clamp it. But there's no point doing that until I've drilled the plug weld hole. Well that took a long time. That is all of the holes for plug welds drilled along the bottom flange. I haven't bothered doing around here because I'm going to seam weld it. But I've done all the way along the top as well to the rear end. I haven't bothered doing the middle bit or the end bit. 
because the holes are already there in the inner sill and B and C pillars. So I can just go through the holes that I drilled out in the car previously. Just had a small sort of moment of realization, epiphany if you will. I was gonna go along with a sanding disc and deburr all of these drilled out plug weld holes. But of course that takes off the protective paint treatment. So I thought, well, why don't I just deburr it with a bigger drill, which is so much faster, so much neater and leaves more paint either side to keep it protected. So that's probably mind numbingly obvious to some of you guys, but I've only just realized that. So I thought I'd tell you in case there are others out there that don't already do this. I've given that sill a decent coat of that bonder primer and I'll probably give it another one before I actually put it on the car. I've also touched in that front section. So that's ready. I'm gonna go and have some lunch now and then come back and hopefully put that sill on. I've just been doing the final fettling to some of these areas where the sill is going to go in. I, I mean in these seams here, top. You might also notice that I've now uh, painted black on top of the red zinc primer stuff. Uh, I've only ever heard good things about that Bonder primer, but I've never actually used it much myself before. So I don't actually know how good it is. So I've gone over the top of it with gloss black reason being that it's you know water will run off it so at the bottom of the sill where I'm not going to be able to get access I've painted gloss um, I've also done the same on the inside of the sill so when that's fitted if water gets in there which it will because that's where the sunroof drains um, it should be nicely protected even if I don't get any wax oil on it. And that is, my intention is to absolutely flood it full of, uh, not wax oil, what's the other one? Dinitrile, that's it. Same as I did on that police car I restored. But I just want to do sort of belts and braces because uh, there's no point doing it. Well, that's a half assed job. So that's my door on. Uh, it's not gapped properly. Actually, it, to, to, it's not that bad, really. Uh, basically, I don't care about the actual gap at the moment, so long as that bottom line is good to that door. I mean, you can see the scalloping's pretty good. It's pretty good at the top. It's not perfect, but it just stops me dropping a bollock by putting a sill on wonky or something stupid like that. So that's actually a much better reference than that door was with its stupid frilly edges and things. One annoying thing that happened, uh, it's been quite windy. I uh, don't know whether you remember, but I fitted nice new mirrors when I went to the restoration show um, and it blew over because I'm an idiot and left it outside and dented the mirror. So that's annoying. Uh, I'll have to keep a lookout for another good one. So that's on. I've got some reasonable guesses as to where the sill needs to go now. So I'm gonna get it out, bring it over here, and then um, see if I can clamp it into position. Right, I'm just going through the process of dummy fitting this sill. Now, that originally was pretty tight to the surface of the old sill, but I was able to get a one mil cutting disc between it and the top of the sill. So actually, that's a pretty good fit there. It also aligns nicely down the bottom. If you remember, the, f the actual bottom of the wing goes over there. And I remember from when I did the police car that that doesn't actually tuck up tight. It always had a little step in it. So that's about right. But I appear to have quite a large gap between the bottom of the doors and the sill, which made me think that perhaps it was all too low relative to the B pillar. So I put a jack in there to just lift it up slightly uh, and it didn't really move very much, which was in a way quite reassuring. But then I looked again and actually you can see the sill is sitting up quite nicely in here. So that's all good. Um, I think most of this is distortion from where I was bending this up to get the old sill out. Uh, you can 
jack it up a little bit more so I'll continue playing with that but actually I'm pretty happy with the line I just want it all up a bit if I can get it the other point of reference which I left for myself deliberately was the rear of this arch that I left pretty pretty flush with where it needed to be uh, and yeah you can see in here that the seal can come up a bit so, there's two ways of doing this you can either push with your foot or if you can get it lever it up like so um, so that's uh, with my foot that's looking better so um, what I had to do with the sill on another SD1 ages ago was I think from a pressing when they're in storage they open up a bit so although the flange at the bottom and at the top can be in the right places this edge which is the critical one for giving the distance to your door can move downwards because the whole like effectively what is a c-section opens up so you can get those bits gobbed on right but um, that edge can can be moved up or down actually it's looking a lot better now, now I've kicked that rear end up if you look on the other side of the car oh I'm out of breath because it's so hot uh, this is all original and there's a gap there you know these are old cars so they were never made with like tiny tolerances but the gap is slightly smaller than I've got on the other side I think what I'm going to do is go and get a nice steel rule and measure what that gap is at the top and the bottom and then try and get the other side of the car to look somewhere somewhere similar if it is because that sill is opened up then I'll have to take it back off the car and manually close it up which means just standing on it but uh, we shall we shall see how close we can get just using the jack grips and my right foot I've done the first scary bit which is a tack up here one down there just to hold the leading edge of the sill because I'm happy that's the right height it fits really nicely in there gives me a nice tight gap here on the other car I measured sorry on the other side of this car I was measuring anywhere between five and eight mil um, the gap is slightly more here but I have just discovered that actually because I unpicked the B pillar the whole thing is free to move if you push it there I'm actually pushing the sill and the B pillar that way all the gaps close up so I've got to find a way now because obviously the jack is holding the sill up but I need a way of holding that in that way so I'll devise something I can't jack too heavily on the sill itself because I'll just dent it but I need to hold that in somehow this is looking very promising indeed what I've done is I've used some stainless steel self tappers uh, I basically held this section up using the drill and then pushed in with my foot and managed to drill the holes and then the self tappers hold it in place so now when you close the door we have a really nice gap all the way to the B pillar it's still a little bit low at the rear end so I've got the jack under there holding it up and I'm just going to try and get a uh, lever bar or something slid in between the flange at the bottom just to lift that corner up and then I'll put a self tapper in there as well and then we should be good to go uh, for clearing out all the plug weld holes with the scribe again to make sure I've got nice good metal and then tacking that on do a final sense check make sure everything lines up and then weld it all right I've just opened the rear door and you can see how low the top of this sill is sitting it should be up there and although I've stuck the sill between the flanges as I'm supposed to there's something holding it down so I'm gonna have a good poke around in that area and then once that's popped up this bit should come and kiss up against that edge and we should be good some poking later it was dead easy all I did was shove this screwdriver through here and push down that will slid up in the seam I put the jack under that corner and it's lifted here 
and I can't shut the door fully because I've got that clamp in there at the moment but you can see how much better that is already so I'm going to put a self tapper in here take that clamp out give it a bit more of a tickle with the hammer across here and uh, that should be it rather frustratingly I've run out of time for today and it is a shame because the world was set up nicely I was doing nice plug welds but literally have no more time left by the time I've packed up and got home I'll be uh, pushing it fine for other things I need to do but all in all it's been a successful day that seal's on there I'm really happy with that gap uh, it's I, what I did was I took that their tape measure and measured the gap from the sill at the B pillar to the underside of the gutter rail and it was bang on 94 centimeters on the other side and I've got 941 here so it's one mil different but that's probably within manufacturers tolerances anyway and with most of these things uh, it's really what it looks like and it looks great the other you know the other freedoms you have is I'm changing that front wing so if I really cared when I put that front wing I could drop it slightly which means I could drop that door and sort of drop that door or twist it a little bit that way so there are ways of making it super perfect if you can really be bothered but on a dark blue car it doesn't really matter that much when I did the police car because it was white the gaps show up a mile so I was doing things like hammering the doors in to move them forwards or backwards to get the lines right uh, which is a real palaver but it, it ended up for a nice looking car whereas this even without having done anything that drastic it's looking real nice so that's great oh and of course the other thing that wing's going to be changed so if I really cared I could move that up and down and around and around to get the seal perfect but you know dark blue car car that cost me I think 300 quid uh, probably not worth it <laughs>